Murray from Collider. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet I you. wanted to ask you about working with Denis because you've worked with some of the best directors in the business. So what is it about him and his style that made him perfect to direct Blade Runner 2049? Uh, I think it's that he's Canadian. What was it like working with him on set? Is there anything that he got out of you in this movie that no other director has tapped into? Uh, no. No. He is just so brilliant. He's so smart and so brave. And, and, but at the same time, he's vulnerable and he has this sensibility and this emotional intelligence to approach this kind of material. I had a great time working with him. I love uh, reasoning with him. I like the way his mind works. I like his, his personality. He's a very laid back, but very thoughtful guy. He's uh, got a, an acute visual uh, um, sensibility, he brought uh, uh, production design and uh, cinematographer uh, in who gave the film a, a stunning look. And, um, you know, we, we worked well together, I think. We, uh, I had a good time. He's such a fan of the original. He'd been so influenced by it. He uh, had such respect for it, but at the same time, he wasn't intimidated by it, and he just made his own movie. And he had such a clear vision for this film, and uh, every choice he made was just to kind of honor the original and, 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 and do what felt like a natural extension of that. So we were in great hands. His vision for it was so... That's why I guess also it took 30 years to make this movie again, because they, you know, the people involved, involved were, were, I guess, trying to find the right story and the right people to do it. Can you guys tell me a little bit about how long you've been involved and how much the script has changed from draft to draft? This time around, I don't know, four years ago, uh, I think three or four years, four years ago. Uh, my level of involvement pales in comparison. I remember uh, going to the set of Blade Runner when they were in prep and uh, realizing it was three years to the date that I started pitching story to Ridley Scott and you know uh, discussing shaping it out and then just kind of feeling like wow that is an incredible passage of time but nothing compared to 1976 uh, and that was uh, over a year ago now so I guess four years for me. I love hearing about how people were first introduced to Blade Runner because there's various cuts out there and you respond differently to each so what was your experience watching Blade Runner for the first time? Oh my god I, I honestly I think I, I was very little still and I was in Cuba so I probably don't remember when was the first time so I would say the first time was a g when I learned I was going to be a part of this project and I went back to it and I revisited it and and then of course you look at it with different eyes and and it's very emotional. How do you guys take the fan reaction to the different versions of the original film and incorporate what people responded to here? Uh, it what it really comes down to is that you, when approaching anything with Blade Runner, you have to incorporate the themes of authenticity into it. The fact that the experience of sitting down to watch Blade Runner begins with someone having to decide which cut to see makes it a, a, a truth is subjectivity question because when someone says, did you like Blade Runner, have you seen Blade Runner? The answer to that is already a conversation. Have you seen them all? Have you seen one? Is your experience different from mine? Which one did you see first to inoculate your own imagination with that interpretation? So from where we were sitting, it was a matter of making sure that that strange and unique experience of uh, not being sure where you stand with the thing you're watching was part of the fabric of the film we were making. Getting really into it, did you pick a role like, oh, like, I want to be a replicant, I want to be a human, I want to fit in in this way in the world? I think you can pick in here. They give you what, <laughs> what they want to give you. But lucky with whatever you get. Oh my God, I was so lucky. My, my, I am so lucky I got to play this part. It's such a complex, multi-layer character. Very strong. She's so, so smart and so passionate and emotional. And it's really... It's, it's going to be a big surprise in this movie. It's huge. What were some of the roadblocks that you hit in order to get this thing a green light and actually get it off the ground? Oh, the roadblocks were, I mean, I think it was when we finished the first one, uh, within a year, uh, we were talking about a second one. Uh, Ridley called, I was in New York, I went out to L.A., and we battered, batted stories around, you know, and, and nothing came of it because of uh, legal problems. What was the original idea, out of curiosity, if you can share it? Uh, oh, I remember. Uh, 
That's a great question. I, I thought, I guess it was because I was reading in the newspapers, I thought Deckard had come to bad circumstances. He was nowhere, and he got assigned a job, a Blade Runner job, in Moscow. Hmm. And it was all Russian and cold and snow and, and you know, Jean Le Claire, you know? That's what I was thinking of. And I, and, and I remember telling Ridley that. I went, in fact, I went to LA, we were having lunch. I said, ah, you know, Harrison in Moscow. Just that's a good thing, right? <laughs> and he's a Nothing came of it. <laughs> so there it is. You have what might have been a Blade Runner sequel oh my God, in 1984 cool. or five. I love the sound of that, that idea. A great question. You should be commended. You got that is. Forget the rest of the interview. Just do scoop. We have Blade Runner 2 from a time capsule. You heard it right there. We're done. <laughs>